In the sciences, people quickly come to regard as their own personal property that which they have learned and had passed on to them at the universities and academies. If someone else comes along with new ideas that contradict the credo and in fact even threaten to overturn it, then all passions are raised against this threat and no method is left untried to suppress it. People resist it in every way possible, pretending not to have heard about it, speaking disparagingly of it, as if it were not even worth the effort of looking into the matter, and so a new truth can have a long wait before finally being accepted. I think you pronounce his name Gotha. For whatever reason, many of us in the West have chosen to tell stories to our little ones about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and other stories. And the purpose of this video isn't to get into why we do that and whether we should or shouldn't do that, but rather to suggest that at some stage the little ones start to work out or they are told that Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy are just stories. What's interesting to me is that adults know that the story of Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy are just stories, and yet many of them don't know that germ theory is just another story. I have covered this topic several times in other content because it is the linchpin for everything that we are seeing going on right now. So what I thought I'd do in this podcast is something a little different. I'm going to read you some quotes, and if this resonates with you or gets you thinking and makes you wonder, could germ theory just be another story to controllers? I'll put some links in the show notes so that you can go and have a look at some more content and some books which are very interesting and worth reading. And I'll put PDFs of the books because they're quite old now, and they will give you more content and more food for your thoughts and cogitations. Germ theory appears to have gained most traction with the big showman, Louis Pasteur. Prior to that, it had been dismissed as an unprovable theory, and that is what it remains as today. However, it does serve a very useful purpose in order to control, manipulate, and keep people in fear. And so, on to some quotes. Human beings, the potentially highest form of life expression on this planet, have built the vast pharmaceutical industry for the central purpose of poisoning the lowest form of life on the planet, germs. One of the biggest tragedies of human civilization is the precedence of chemicals over nutrition. Dr. Richard Murray. If I could live my life over again, I would devote it to proving that germs seek the natural habitat, diseased tissue, rather than being the cause of the diseased tissue. Rudolf Virchow. Nothing is lost. Nothing is created. All is transformed. Nothing is the prey of death. All is the prey of life. Antoine Beauchamp. The specific disease doctrine of the grand refuge of weak, uncultured, unstable minds such as now rule in the medical profession. There are no specific diseases. There are specific disease conditions. Florence Nightingale. Medical doctors are working on the germ theory of disease, but the germ theory is already weakening and is due for being thrown aside. Dr. Fraser of Canada and Dr. Powell of California have experimented with billions of germs of all varieties, but they have been unable to produce a single disease by the introduction of germs into human subjects. Dr. Waite tried for years to prove the germ theory, but he could not do so. During the World War, an experiment was conducted at Gallups Island, Massachusetts, in which millions of influenza germs were injected into over 100 men at the government hospital, and no one got the flu. Germs are scavengers. Principles and Practice of Naturopathy E.W. Cordingly, M.D., N.D.A.M. We said before that so-called germs are ubiquitous. They are ever-present in many varying forms in both healthy and sick people. These microbes kick into what modern medicine call pathogens when the media is toxic and conducive to clean up. When you enter into a healing crisis and your body is throwing off toxins, these germs appear out of your very substance to help eliminate, process, and break down these toxins. Germs have absolutely no causal relationship to disease, but germs do appear to help you clean out because, put quite simply, your disease is your cure. 
Dr. William P. Trebing, Goodbye Germ Theory, page 154. Viruses are simply the excretions of a toxic cell. Viruses are pieces of DNA or RNA with a few other proteins. They butt out from a cell. They happen when the cell is poisoned. They are not the cause of anything. Thomas Cowan, MD, on Rudolf Steiner's Insights. The entire fabric of the germ theory of disease rests upon assumptions which not only have not been proved, but which are incapable of proof, and many of them can be proved to be the reverse of truth. The basic one of the unproven assumptions, wholly due to Pasteur, is the hypothesis that all the so-called infections and contagion disorders are caused by germs. M. L. Levison, MD. If the germ theory were true, no one would be alive to believe it. B. J. Palmer, D.C. Three criteria are, according to the scientific method, needed to properly identify a virus. It must be isolated from a host cell. As of 2016, this has never been accomplished in humans. It must be photographed and its diameter measured. As of 2016, this has never been accomplished in humans. It must be biochemically characterized. As of 2016, this has never been accomplished in humans. This has never been done with any virus, herpes, hepatitis, H1N1, bird flu, swine flu, influenza, polio, measles, let alone HIV, HPV, SARS, Zika, or Ebola. Viruses, how much is that dogma in the window? New Medicine Online. We agree with those members of the profession who hold that no germ causes tuberculosis. Germs do not cause any disease. Further, we agree that there is more harm in the fear of germs than there is in germs themselves. Timely Truths on Human Health, Simon Lewis Katzoff, MD, 1921. The general public have been told that we do not become ill except when germs penetrate into from without. The germ theory of disease is ridiculous. Beauchamp or Pasteur, a lost chapter in the history of biology, E. Douglas Hume. By the way, that was one of the books that I have a PDF of for you that I'll put a link in the show notes. You are working under a wrong premise to begin with, and you're never going to find the answers if you do that. Viruses have no nucleus. There is no respiratory system. There's no circulatory system. There's no digestive system. Viruses are not alive. That's like saying soap is alive. They're not alive. They are solvents. They are soaps. However, more accurately, they are enzymes to fractionate tissue for waste elimination. Anginous von der Planets. We must infer that at least some and probably all three of those Russian peasants died because of Pasteur's vaccine, as did uncounted people later on. Only one thing is sure. Ever since Pasteur developed his vaccine, the cases of death from rabies have increased, not diminished. Hans Roosh. By the way, he's done an excellent book on the hoax of vivisection and how, at the time of writing it, more than 300 million animals are slaughtered unnecessarily every year in the so-called name of science. Had it not been for the mass selling of vaccines, Pasteur's germ theory of disease would have collapsed into obscurity. E. Douglas Hume. In 1915, another medical doctor wrote an article for the top British medical journal, Lancet. Dr. Montace studied 21 cases of tetanus, each of whom had received Pasteurian inoculation. The conclusion of the article, which had appeared in the 23rd of October 1915 issue, was that in every case, the tetanus had been caused by the inoculation. Dr. Montace said that Pasteur has created a new form of disease, the post-antibiotic age germ theory by Tim O'Shea. The culprit, however, is not the microbe. It is the level of toxicity you have in your own bloodstream. Goodbye germ theory, Dr. William P. Trebing, 2006. In all that I have witnessed, inside and outside of laboratories, there is only one cause of disease. Industrial pollution in medication, food, air, soil and water. Strengthening the body's constitution and lymphatic system is the first step to reversing stroke-curing disease. Anginus von der Planets.
Germs cannot be the cause of disease because disease germs are also found in healthy bodies. Nature Cure, H. Lindlal, MD. What's happening is, like I said, we have colds, which are mainly bacterial, which go feed on toxic tissue that's been damaged. We don't eat well enough. We don't eat all raw, and therefore we accumulate toxicity. So bacteria have to come in and eat that waste product because we can't keep up with all the waste, okay? So that's what a cold is. Flu is mainly viral. Some bacteria may be active during flu. But when we are so toxic that the bacteria are poisoned by the tissue from chemical inundation, then we have to make solvents. Each cell makes a solvent. Each cell makes a soap to help clean itself. And it's a union. It's like a factory. All the particular cells get together and say, let's make this to help clean ourselves. It's just that when the accumulation of industrially contaminated waste is so great and you can't use microbes, then the cells make solvents, that is, viruses we call flu. Anginus von der Planets. Any kind of flu is the same thing. When the climate and temperature are right, certain tissues will cleanse. They may have a seven-year cycle. They may have a six-month cycle. It depends on the tissue and how contaminated it is. If certain tissue needs to cleanse every two years, if waste tissue is too toxic for microbes, our bodies will create a solvent, a virus, that fractionates and cleanses out the particular tissue every two years, every six months, every three months, every seven years, every 12 years, depending on that tissue and how contaminated it is. The myth that herpes is contagious is pharmaceutical industry fiction to scare you into taking medication. Anginus von der Planets. Rudolf Virchow, a great German scientist, repudiated the germ theory of disease. He said the disease brought on germs rather than the germs caused disease. Claude Bernard, Bechamp and Tissot, great French scientists, all disproved the germ theory of disease. In Hans Sale's book, Stress of Life, page 205, an account is recorded that Louis Pasteur, inventor of the germ theory of disease, admitted he was wrong. Sanitation is the only factor that has reduced the spread of old-time scourges. If the germ theory were founded on fact, there would be no living being to read what is written here. For germs are ubiquitous, they exist everywhere. In many diseases supposedly caused by a specific germ, that germ is not present. Contrarywise, specific germs said to cause a specific disease are present in huge proportions without the specific disease manifesting itself. Dr. Bernard, DCDD. Let's leave that there for now. If you're so inclined and this has piqued your interest, there are references you can follow in the show notes so that you can go and do your own research and draw your own conclusions. You are amazing, and I'm looking forward to speaking to you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.